let's give God all glory and honor. Thank Him for what He's done for you since the beginning of the year. Thank Him for January, for February, for March. And now thank Him for bringing you to the second quarter of this year. Worship the King of Kings, worship the Lord of Lords. Worship the ancient of days. Magnify his holy name. Thank him for life. Thank him for provision. Thank him for protection. Thank you for thank him for his mercy. Thank him for standing by you taking care of you, taking care of your family. Thank you for the assurance that your tomorrow is going to be all right. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. And then you lift your voice to him and say, Father, in my life, let this month be a very glorious one. Go ahead, talk to the almighty God. Father, in my life, in every facet of my life, let this month be a very glorious month. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to the Holy Name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I have a Father, Almighty Father, He is King of kings and Lord of lords. I have a Father, Hallelujah. of days, the father of the fatherless, the father of all fathers, the father of all mothers, the father of all children, glory be to your holy name. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, we are praying that anyone who has been suffering any form of delay, Today, you put an end to the delay. That all manners of waitings will be terminated today. 
those who have been waiting on you for precious husband and precious wives this month my father and my god perform a miracle those who are waiting on you even for the fruit of the womb this month perform a miracle single mothers who have been looking unto you, Lord, for settlement. Father, this month perform a miracle. All widows and widowers looking up to you for a miracle, please perform one this month. All of the people who are waiting on you for promotion, for acceleration, for progress, for breakthrough. Father, this month perform a miracle. Before this month is over, let it be said of all your children that these people are for signs and wonders. And all your children who have been faithful in the payment of their tithes and giving of their offerings, this month, with your blessings, embarrass them. That kind of blessings that people will look at them and wonder, my Father, my God, give unto them. Let it be well with all of us today. And let this month be an extremely glorious month. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on Nigeria. Have mercy on all nations of the world. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. And then wave at one or two people and prophesy, no more waiting. And then you may please be seated. God bless you. Well, how many of you expect that before the end of this month you will shout for joy? If you are one of them, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Well, before we go to the topic of today, I think I need to clear one very important point. I understand that uh, some people have been writing all manners of articles about uh, instructions that have been passed to all members of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Let me make it loud and clear. And please, I want you to listen with anointed ears and anointed hearts. <laughs> Pastor Adebo is not and will never be a politician. I have never been. I will never be. That's not my calling. I am called to be a pastor. That's what God called me to be. That's why you don't have me carrying a very big title. He says to me clearly, you are to be pastor. When I became general overseer, um, you might not know why general overseer was uh, reduced to geo. <laughs> when I became general overseer, if you came to my little office over there, there is uh, a nameplate that you will see 
in, on my table. Reverend Dr. E. A. Adeboye, B.S.C. Ife, M.S.C. 19 something something Lagos, P.A.D. 19 something something Lagos, General Overseer. Then the time came. I was about, so that when you come into my office, you know, <laughs> you, know you are coming to a big man, and, uh, an academician. And the time came, I, I was about to turn 40. And God paid me a visit. And he will pay you a visit today. Yeah. And showed me a vision. And in the vision, he showed me two graphs. Knowing, knowing that I'm a mathematician, he decided to speak to me mathematically. One graph was what a mathematics will call head-up parabola. A head-up parabola is just like a hill, okay? Goes like that. And then showed me another graph on the same sheet, a head down parabola. A head down parabola is like a valley. At the turning point of both, up there and down there, was the mark 40. So I knew straight away he was talking about my age. And then he asked me, son, which of these two graphs do you want? And he gave me enough grace to know that I prefer the head down parabola. Meaning what? That at the age of 40, I'm going to be at my lowest. Uh, from there on, I will be climbing. And by the grace of God, and with your support and prayers, I'm still climbing. And I will keep climbing. <laughs> then he said, you have chosen wisely. And this is what you have to do from now on. All these big titles, Reverend, Doctor, uh, BSc, MSc, PhD, they have to go. You are to be my pastor. And PhD, etc., et that's for the university where you are coming from. Here, you are going to be my pastor. So I'm a pastor. I've said it again and again and again. I'm not even a prophet. I only hear from him once in a while. And that will probably come in as I continue with my little talk to you today. Because I need to get this clear once and for all. My assignment is to pray for you. Pray for nations, including Nigeria. My assignment has nothing to do with partisan politics. Don't distract my attention. You will bear me out. Those of you who are genuine members of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, I have never told you this is the fellow you should vote for. Have I ever said that one? Whether in secret or in open, never. I have never said this is the party you should belong to. I've never said it. I will never say it. And you know why? Because in the redeemed Christian Church of God, every party is heavily represented. Everyone. 
APC, PDP, APGA, Labour Party, and some parties, you don't even know their names. The only reason I have not, I've never voted is that if I vote for anyone, I will be unjust to the rest of my children. I am the father of all, and I like it that way. All I'm saying, and I'm saying it loud and clear, as a Nigerian, every one of you, you are all Nigerians. You are Nigerians before you became a Christian. Because nobody is born a Christian. You are a true Christian after you give your life to Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Before you became a Christian, you are a Nigerian. You have a duty to your country to register, to vote, to make sure that your vote will count. You have a duty to belong to any party of your choice at the very grassroots. You can't sit down, fold your hands, refuse to vote, and then begin to complain about the government. What were you doing when they were voting? They were voting, you sat down at all. You didn't register. And all kinds of people then came around and selected for you a government, whether at the gubernatorial level or uh, presidential level or even local government level. They chose for you because you refused to do anything. And then you begin to complain. You must register. Do I hear amen? amen. Loud and clear. Amen. You must vote. Amen. I didn't hear amen to that. Amen. You must sit down there after you have voted to make sure they count the vote. And you take note of what who they say won. It doesn't matter to me who. You must make sure that there is no more rigging in Nigeria. Do I hear amen? I don't care who is your, I mean, which is your party. I don't care who you vote for. Do your duty. That's all I'm asking you to do. And you must do it. Now, some people now, and very funny people, I know they just want to distract my attention. My assignment is to pray. And nobody is going to distract me. And I will pray for this nation. I mean, some of you are here. You remember our ladies here? I asked for a thousand volunteers who will fast for 72 hours with me to pray for Nigeria. I asked for a thousand volunteers. I got, you are so wonderful people. I got more than 26,000. And we prayed. And whether you believe it or not, God heard. And the answer will come. But we will need to pray even more. And I will explain to you in a moment why we need to pray a little more. Because there were some problems that we didn't identify at the time. That have surfaced now. And I'll tell you a little bit about that. But listen to me carefully. So if you are going to quote me, quote me correctly. And I'm talking to those of you who are my children. You want to know the truth? Yes, sir. The whole truth? Yes, sir. And nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Mm. 
I'm talking of myself now. As of now, as I'm standing before you, I still don't know whether or not there will be an election next year. Don't say that Pastor Adebo said there will be no election next year. That's not what I said. What was it I said? Adebo does not know yet. Yet. Oh. Put the word yet. How come you don't know? Because my father hasn't talked to me about it at all. The last time we had an election, he spoke to me about the election by June of the previous year. And this is April. So it's not late. But he hasn't told me yet. He might have told you some of you are prophets. You are closer to him. But is there any one of you here who can raise your hand to heaven and say, without any doubt, there will be an election in 2023. If you can tell us, stand up and we will clap for a prophet. I don't know yet. Remember to put the word yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it could be, it could be, I mean, the reason he hasn't told me yet, could be because he said, take no thought about tomorrow. Sufficient for the day is the evil thereof. 2023 is still a long time away. I have a lot of things now occupying my mind for which you, my partners, must join me in prayer. Let me tell you one or two of them. Kaduna. You can't go to Kaduna by road. You can't go to Kaduna by air. They can attack you at the airport. You can't go to Kaduna by train. That brings so my mind. I say, man, who is a man of prayer? Question number one. Why Kaduna? Question number two. Who is trying to isolate Kaduna? Question number three, why? Question number four, after Kaduna, which next? Some of you are killing yourself about 2023. Some of you Christians. You don't even know if the rapture may have come before the end of this year. Can the rapture come before then? We are talking of today, now. Kaduna. That's one point, a prayer point for my partners. Take note. Number two. <laughs> It is in the news. And nobody had denied it. That as of now, more than 80% of the oil we are producing is being stolen. I mean, you didn't read that in the news? More than 80% of all the oil we are producing is being stolen. And nobody had denied it. It came from the government. That leads me to several questions. Number one, who is the one stealing the oil? Number two, where is the money going to? Ah. Eighty <laughs> percent.
percent of what should have been the income of a nation is going to the hand of some people. That's a lot of money, man. What do they want to do with the money? That's question number three. Question number four. Who are the foreign nations by the stolen oil? Question number five. How many of these nations of the world are your friends? So you can see the reason why I'm not thinking of uh, 2023. Oh, maybe that's why God has not spoken to me about that because there is a lot to deal with now. Do I tell you one more thing? It is open secret. It's in the news. Undenied. That more than 90% of our income, more than 90% of the money we get from the leftover of the oil that was uh, stolen, we are using it to pay the interest of the money we have already borrowed. More than 90%. And then, it is news. Um, I'm sure you listen to the news. We are borrowing more. Meaning what? According to a friend of mine, we are moving steadily to bankruptcy. A whole nation. My beloved Nigeria is moving steadily towards <laughs> bankruptcy. We are talking of today now. So you can see the reason why somebody like me, I am more concerned about what is happening now than What's going to happen a year from now? So please, all my partners, wake up. We must pray again. We must pray for Kaduna. Pray for all the states. Pray for our beloved Nigeria. Pray that the almighty God, who sees all, will expose those who are stealing our oil. That this almighty God we have mercy on our nation. Is the almighty. He can deal with our debt. After all, during the reign of uh, President Obasanjo, we, we became debt free because the people we owed forgave us. That God is here on his throne. If, if that God does not intervene, eh? your children, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren will still be paying debt. That has to change. Then let me now conclude. <laughs> because I have a lot to say. So you help me beg all this um, political gymnast. Not to bother me with this. Let me do my job. You know why I'm not a politician? Why I'm not bothered about who is going to be who? And for your information, anybody who comes to me, anybody who comes to me from whatever party and ask me to pray, I will pray. I have only one prayer for every one of them. Father, 
Let your perfect will concerning this fellow be done. That's always my prayer. <laughs> it is written. Those of you who are killing yourself over who rules, who does not rule. It is written, the most high rules in the affairs of men and he gives it to whomsoever he pleases. That's what the Bible says. That's why I'm waiting. Whoever he says, that's my fellow. That, who are you supporting? Whoever God says. Eh, you say you are not a politician. Why are you asking your children to show interest in politics? Witches are showing interest. <laughs> Didn't you read that in the paper? If something is so important that witches are showing interest, should Christians go to sleep? I think I better stop there. <laughs> All right, now, First Kings chapter 19. From verse 15 to 19. Our topic today is waiting without wasting. First King chapter 19, from verse 15 to 19. Thank you, Daddy. I know tomorrow will be all right. And the Lord said unto him, Go. Return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Isaiah to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And he, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Mehola, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Let's jump to verse 19. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he with the twelve. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instrument of the oxen and gave unto the people and they did it. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. Point number one. God has a plan for your life. Before you were born, God has a plan for your life. Just as he had a plan for Nigeria before we were born. Because whether you know it or not, who is going to be our ruler God knew before we were born. As for you, he has a plan for your life. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. Jeremiah 1, 4 and 5. He said, before I formed thee, I knew thee. While you were still in the womb, I have settled your case. That's what God said. He has a plan for your life. He has a plan as to who you will marry, when you will marry, etc., etc. Et he has a plan for your life. Number two, 
which is even more important. Your future will seek you out. You are not the one to struggle about your future. You can't even do much about your future anyway. I told the pastors last month, or was it the month before, time is like a river flowing steadily. When you were born, you, you got into the river, and the river is carrying you along. You are not where you are today because you are clever. Everything has been planned before you were born. And I can prove it to you from my own life experience. But your future will seek you out. Elisha was busy plowing. He thought he was going to be the richest farmer in the land. God said, thank you, my friend. You are going to be my prophet. Period. I thought I was going to be the youngest vice chancellor in Africa. God said, thank you, sir. You are going to be pastor. Keep getting the degrees. Huh? But you are going to be what? Pastor. So your husband to be we locate you. Your wife to be, will be located. Your future will seek you out. Elijah sought out Elisha. They had finished the discussion about Elisha when he didn't even know what was coming. He was a farmer. And if there are any delays, and this is very important, it could be because you are precious. Or the one that is going to be your partner is precious. The elders have a say, the one who is late in eating doesn't eat rubbish. Ask the elders. Uh, <laughs> uh, elders, please forgive me or that a small boy is uh, using pro uh, proverbs in your presence. In Luke chapter 1, read it from verse 1 to 25. Luke 1, 1 to 25. The Bible tells us Elizabeth and Zechariah, they were holy people. And they prayed, they waited, they did everything. God didn't answer. Because the baby that is going to be born through them is going to be only six months older than Jesus Christ. When that boy was finally born, it was written about him in Matthew 11, verse 11. Matthew 11, verse 11. He was the greatest of the Old Testament saints. God knows your future. Your future is settled. He knows who is going to be your perfect wife, perfect husband. He knows what is going to be perfect for you. And I pray with all the anointing of God upon my life, God's perfect will concerning you will be done. Therefore, be careful of shortcuts. Don't say God is late. Let me use my own wisdom. If you do so, you will get what God did not plan for you. And you may not even like what you finally get. Uh, you know the story of Abraham and Sarah. God promised Abraham, you, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. He said, I am barren. God said, I, I know what I'm doing. 
Uh, the wife said, oh, oh, Papa, nothing is happening. This is my housemaid. Uh, go into her. <laughs> Each time I read that story, I always wonder about Father Abraham. Your wife said, Go into my maid. You say, Thank you, my dear. So you two have been thinking. <laughs> He didn't even say, let me pray. Uh, God help uh, Father Abraham. And the problem that came as a result of that agreement, the world is yet to recover. Wait for your Isaac. He will come. As long as God remains the God Almighty. If you allow him your perfect, his perfect purpose for your life, who will come. And he knows many ways by which he could maneuver things to happen. Many ways. He maneuvered me out of my plan. And I didn't even know when that he was at work then. And he's walking his purpose out in your life now. I told you several years ago, there was this uh, scholarship, they call it Commonwealth Scholarship. I don't know if they still award it. And I applied so that I can go and do a master's degree somewhere in uh, the Commonwealth. I came for the interview. And in mathematics, it's either you know the answer to a question or you don't know. Mathematics is not guesswork. That's why people run away from it. I sat down at the interview. They asked me the questions. And I was looking at them. What kind of question are you asking me? Do you know I'm a honor student? What is this? I said, ah, this is it. What is that? Ask me something serious. It's supposed to be an interview. After I've answered all questions correctly, the chairman of the board of the interview something, who is from one part of the country that I won't mention, and was fully asleep when they were interviewing me, they woke him up and they said, Sir, a few questions for him. He said, ah, yes, yes. Um, where's Entebbe? Entebbe. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> Unfortunately, I said, sir, I, I, I am here for mathematics, not geography. And everybody laughed. And I lost. Because the chairman was made to look ridiculous. But as I was coming out of the hall where they interviewed me, which was at the University of Lagos, I met a man who was my lecturer at the University of Nigeria, Osuka. And he saw me, he said, ah, I did boy. Ah, I said, sir, I don't know. How, how are you, sir? He said, what are you doing here? I came for this uh, interview. He said, why do you have to go abroad? I know your stuff. Come to the University of Lagos and I will supervise you. That's how I ended up at the University of Lagos. That's why I got born again when I got born again. That's why I'm standing before you today. It caused somebody to fall asleep. So he could ask a ridiculous question so that I won't miss my purpose. In the name that's above every other name, your purpose in life shall be fulfilled. Now, delay could come as a result of one or two or three things. Number one, maybe you don't like what God is presenting you with. Mm. Genesis 29 
You can read it from verse 16 to 35, Genesis 29, from verse 16 to 35. God wanted, uh, what's his name now? Jacob. To marry Leah. Leah mm, is not very beautiful. It's uh, Rachel I want. Ah, okay. <laughs> so he labored for seven years. And the father-in-law, who was a 419 man, and once it was at night, he snaked in Leah. Papa was so in love that he didn't even check the face of the fellow he was sleeping with. The following morning, he said, eh? You? <laughs> Read the passage. Leah was bringing forth children like rabbits. Almost every year. It will produce another one. But God said, no, 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 it's Rachel. Like, well, the father-in-law said, another seven year wait. There are some of us, beautiful ladies, God has shown you your husband. Then you look at him and say, this one, for me? <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure you heard the story of a girl who prayed and said, God, Anyone that you ask me to marry, I will marry the fellow. She finished praying, and the brother came and said, Sister, thou said the Lord, you are the one I will marry. And sister said, Oh God, I ask for anybody, not anything. <laughs> I don't know whether it's a true story or but somebody told me. <laughs> And all of you, my boys, anything in your life that will cause anybody to call you anything, God will remove you today. <laughs> Number two, the lake will be caused by forces of darkness. That could be dem demonic interference. Daniel chapter 10 from verse 1 to 14. Daniel 10 from verse 1 to 14. Daniel was a man of God, committed to God, pure in every way. He won't even eat the king's meat. And he prayed and fasted for 21 days. And the answer didn't come. On the 21st day, an angel came and said, Sir, from the first time you prayed, God had and sent an angel, sent me to bring you the answer. But on the way, a demon stopped me and we were wrestling until God sent another angel to so come and engage that demon so I can bring you the answer. So there could be delay caused by evil forces. And some of you will also remember the testimony of one of my daughters. You know? These are not stories I'm making up, true stories. She came to a meeting in our former place of worship there, like this, and God spoke to me and said, ah, there is someone here, there's a girl here. God says, your mother is the one standing between you and marriage. If she does not let you go, she will die within seven days. The following day, the mother came with the, with the daughter. Very, very angry. You are the one who are spoiling these little girls. Doing all manners of things to them. You, you, you said that I'm going to die. I said, me? Umbo, I, I mentioned anybody's name. Mama said, she came home and said that I would die. We didn't say, I said, I'm not you, Mao. Don't mind her. God says someone. I don't know how she picked that one up. She said, eh. I said, don't mind her at all. I didn't say that to you. So she said, okay. In that case, she said, the girl should go out. 
the girl who got out of my office and he said, Pastor, is it true that what you said will happen? I said, it's not you, Mao. <laughs> I'm not talking about you, but the woman who is not allowing her daughter to marry, as my God lives, before the end of the week, they are going to bury the woman. Oh, is that? <laughs> it's not that I don't want her to marry, but she's the one taking care of me. I said, that's no problem, Mama. I will talk to the husband. They will take care of you. Double. Yeah, okay, if that's the case, then that's all right. Less than six months later, my daughter was married. I decree today, anyone blocking your way, blocking your way to progress, blocking your way to fulfillment, blocking your way to joy, if he or she does not repent, that fellow will not see the end of this month. Then, then finally, another cause of delay could be your own disobedience. If God says, don't go this way, you say, that's the way I'm going. I am going to go. Don't do this. You say, that's what I'm going to do. Fine. Up to you. Numbers chapter 22, from verse 10 to 34. Numbers 22, 10 to 34. God said to one prophet, Balaam by name, don't go with Balak. You can't curse my people. They are my children. And when my children are blessed, they are blessed. You try to curse them, you are the one who end up in trouble. Yeah, but uh, there was big money that was waiting. So because of money, he decided to go contrary to the will of God. So on the way, an angel blocked his way. You know, I've said it before. If a demon stands in your way, and you're a child of God, you will say in the name of Jesus Christ, get out of my way. It is written, at the name of Jesus Christ, every name must bow. But if it is an angel that is blocking your way, ah, and you say, hey, get out of my way. And you say, why? He said, because in the name of Jesus, every name must bow. He said, it is Jesus who asked me to stand here. He's the Lord of hosts. If it is God that is blocking your way, there's nothing any Genova here can do for you. You can fast. You can pray. If God is the one blocking your way until you repent, the way is not going to open. I could have told you stories, but uh, I'm watching my time. I have I've overshot the allocated time. Today is not the day of allocation of time. Because in the life of all of you, my children, no more delay. So if you know you are disobedient to God, start obeying him immediately. Don't let anybody put all manners of rubbish into your brain. Read the Bible for yourself. Read the Bible for yourself. I, I will just take this one as just one of the examples. The Almighty God said, bring all the tithes into my house. Some people got up and they said, no, that's Old Testament. That's law. It's Moses speaking. Hey, Abraham paid tithes. 
hundreds of years before Moses was born. Matthew 23, verse 23. Matthew 23, verse 23. Jesus himself said, Do every other thing that you want to do and pay your tithe also. Jesus said so. No, 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 no. I'm not going to do that. That's uh, fine. God won't struggle with you. Some of you will need to learn by experience. Told you the story of a friend of mine, of blessed memory now. He died old, though. He didn't die young. A great lawyer gave his life to Jesus Christ. And the issue of tithe came up. And you know, as a lawyer, he dribbled me fine, fine. Finally, I said, listen, at that time I wasn't a full-time pastor, I was a lecturer at the university. I said, the tithe is not coming to me. It's for your own good. God, he said, you do that, I will open a door. I will open the windows of heaven. Yeah. He, said, he said, okay, let us reach an agreement. I said, okay. What's the agreement? He said, let God show me if it is true. Ah, I said, that's great. Great man. He lost three cases in a row. And if you ask lawyers, they will tell you <laughs> that's not good for your practice. He has a bakery from which he made a lot of money. Christmas was approaching. And all his bakers, all of them, came to him one day and said, we resign. Why? I will double your money. Christmas is a peak period. They said, any amount you give us, we are not working for you anymore. What if I do? We are not working for you anymore. That festive season passed. He lost a lot of money. Like I told you, he lost three cases in a row. Then he came to me, he said, it appears as if God is talking. Ah. I said, are you sure? He said, from now, I will restitute my ways. I said, in that case, watch and see. He appealed the three cases and won the three. Bakers came from all over asking it to be paid even less than it was paid originally. If God shuts the door, nobody can open it. When he opens the door, nobody can. Maybe God has been calling you and saying, surrender your life to me. And you have been resisting. And you are asking why the delay. Or you claim that you are born again. But you are still living in sin. When the Bible says if a man is in Christ, it's a new creature. All old things are passing, all things have become new. But nothing has become new in your life. And you are wondering why the delay. Oh. You are welcome. If you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ today, you are welcome. If you want to return to God, if you are backsliding, you are welcome. I'm going to count from one to five. It's, for, it's your own choice. But if you give your life to him and you really mean it, there will be no more delay. So I'm calling now one. Two. The choice is yours. You can do your own thing your own way. Handle your life your own way. No problem. God is waiting, sitting down in heaven, looking down from above. Three. Please come very quickly. I'm running out of time. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. The choice is yours. You choose right. Since we change.
Audio. Four. Thank you, Father. Those of you on the way, audio, 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 audio. And those of us who are already in the front, let's talk to Jesus, tell him, I've come to surrender my life to you. I will do your will from now. And if you're a backslider, come back to him and say, I'm coming back, I'm coming back home. Take me back, oh Lord. Talk, talk to the Almighty God. You are to pray at this moment. You are not to pray to me, pray to God. Everybody, please stretch your hands towards those who are in front and intercede for them and ask that the Almighty God will have mercy on them and save their souls and ask that the, the blood that cleanses you from all sins will cleanse you, these people from all their sins. Pray for them, brethren. Intercede for them. Go and wait for me in the go and wait for me in the vestry. Go and wait for me in the vestry. Pray for them, Lord. Intercede for them. That the Almighty God will have mercy on them and He will save their souls. Let's cry to God for them. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father, my God, I want to thank you for your word. And I want to thank you for these, your children, who have come forward to surrender their life to you. Father, please receive them. Forgive them. Save their souls. Let your blood wash away their sins. And from now on, any time they call on you, answer them by fire. In their lives, every obstruction removed today. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I rejoice with those of you who have come forward. I want to promise you from now on, I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. And I promise you, I'll be praying. But I want you to wait here for now, uh, because I want you to join this final prayer. Can we please stand? Uh, if you believe that God will answer you today, let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> Lift your voice to the Almighty God loud and clear and say, Father, in every facet of my life, let there be no more delays. Open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. No more delays, O oh Lord. <laughs>